Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I'd like to welcome you to this video where we are going to go through the walkthrough of how to make your clamps that you got off the IDC Woodcraft store. And how to set it up on your CNC router, uh, the supplies that you need, and we'll just do a walkthrough of how it's actually going to be cut. And we're going to do all this on the long mill CNC router. Now you have two files. You have one that'll cut 28 clamps and one that'll cut 16 clamps. It all depends on the size of your CNC router. So we're going to do the walkthrough for this whole thing. Both of them are set up the same way. Now before I get into that, if you have landed on this video and you're not sure what I'm talking about, this video is a walkthrough for people who purchased a G-code file and design files of how to make your own clamps on your CNC router. So I provide video instructions as well as paper instructions when people get the files from me. I'm a huge proponent of making your own stuff on your CNC router when you can do it. I mean, after all, you bought a machine to make stuff and one of the things you can make are clamps. And on top of that, I prefer soft clamps like out of pine or plywood. When you buy clamps for your CNC router, you're usually paying $50 or more for a set of four and they're usually made out of a hard material like steel. And you know, steel and your router bit don't get along too well, inevitably. Somewhere in your CNC journey, you are going to run into your clamps and guess what's going to give? Your CNC router bit. And so that's why I like to use wood clamps because the router bit will just cut right through it like it's not even there. And with the file that I have here, you have a whole bunch, 28 as opposed to four. Make your own stuff. So if you are curious about this, how to design your own, there's a link to a video down below that tells you how to do that and the link to the IDC Woodcraft store to get this file. With that being said, for you who has purchased the file to make these, before we get started, I just wanna show you real quick what a person ends up with when they prove out a file that they're gonna make available to you. <laughs> so, as you can see, I've got a lifetime worth of clamps here. But that's what it takes to make sure that the file that I created for you is going to work the right way. Just make sure you follow these instructions. Alright, let's dive into this so you know how to get this thing set up. Make your own clamps. So first, let's talk about the material that you need. You have two files. One for a large machine and one for a small machine. So here we've got a long mill CNC router. It's a large bed machine. And so the size of our material can be larger. So for larger CNC routers like the long mill, you want to get material that's 16 inches by 16 inches. And it has to be three quarters inch thick. Now this is a 36 inch piece of wood that I picked up at Lowe's. That's the smallest I could find in that size. It's 20 bucks. However, we'll cut that down. If you have a smaller machine, then you want a 12 inch by 12 inch by 3 quarter inch thick piece of material. Now I'm using pine here. You can use either pine or plywood. Do not use MDF. MDF is no good for clamps. Now since you're making clamps, I have to assume that you don't have clamps right now. So we still have to hold our project down. So we're gonna use a different technique called the CA glue hold down technique. Now everything I'm gonna talk about, there are links in the description down below. The supplies you need is painter's tape, two inches wide is my preference. You want a scraper, plastic, metal, doesn't really matter. And we wanna get some CA glue. Now this is Starbond brand thin CA glue. It's uh, the well-known brand in the CNC and woodworking industry. I've got several videos on how to use this because it's not just for this technique. There's links down in the description for all that and a 10% discount code. You'll want to go see the videos about that. And finally, we need a quarter inch router bit. This router bit will work the entire job. So it is the only bit that you need to use for this whole project. There's a link down below for them as well in the description. Now there's a couple things we have to talk about before we go on. And the first is, it doesn't matter which G-code file you're using, whether it's the 28 clamp G-code file or the 16 clamp G-code file. They both are set up exactly the same way as I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. So 
just follow that instruction. The second is much more important. You have to make sure that the G code file that you're going to be using is going to work on your CNC router before you start cutting clamps out. So basically what you're going to do is not install a router bit, not put a project piece on your work table. You'll find an XYZ zero position somewhere in the front left corner of your machine out in space. Don't turn the router on and then hit go. You want to make sure that this file is going to do what I'm showing you what it's going to be doing later on in this video. You want to make sure you watch the whole video first before you do anything. We just want to make sure this is going to do what we want it to do, which is make you the clamps and that there's going to be no conflicts with your control software and the G code and your CNC router. Just a good practice to be in first. So I'm going to repeat this because it's that important. Do not put a router bit in. Find an XYZ zero position somewhere out in space in the front left corner area of your machine. Do not turn the router on. Load the G code file and hit go and make sure it's going to do what this video is showing you what it's supposed to do. And with that, we're good to go once you verify that. So the first thing you want to do is make sure the surfaces are clean. So dust any sawdust off of the board both sides and the work surface of your CNC router. And now you see on my router I have grids engraved on the bed. This is something you want to do on your CNC router. This way we can align our board exactly where we want it to be. There's a link in the description where I have a video that tells you how to do that. Okay, so we have the board in position. We're going to put tape here, here, and here on the board and on the table. So first we'll put it on the right and you run it all the way down. Then we do it on the left and we'll do it in the center. And then we'll take our scraper and just press the tape down. Now sometimes you might get a buckle like right there. All you do is just lift the tape back up and press it back down with your scraper and do that on all the taped surfaces. You don't have to press hard. And now we want to see where we're going to be putting the tape at on the table. So just position the board, eyeball it. We know the depth of the tape and the grid lines of the tape. So we're going to put tape down in the same positions on the table. We'll press it down with the scraper. And we'll put our left side down. Press it down with the scraper and the middle. And then we're going to just check, make sure we are aligned with the tape on the board and the table. And this is where the CA glue comes in handy to hold projects down. You're going to love this technique. It's very useful. We just need to know where we're putting the glue down. Now this is the thin CA glue, like I said before, from Starbond. And we're going to run a bead all the way down each piece of tape. And you want to be careful when you turn the bottle because sometimes it likes to kind of squirt out. And this is what the bead ends up looking like. And so what we'll do now is take the board, align it up with a piece of tape, and you simply lay it down and press it down. Now I discovered something during this. The shop was pretty cold, about 40 degrees. And the thin CA glue should set up quickly, within five seconds. But here it's not. It took about 30 seconds to set up. So if you're working in a cold environment, then you want to hold it down a little bit longer. I ended up taking two 20-pound weights and just setting it on there. Now it's time to install our bit. So we're not going to use a quarter-inch down bit. We're going to use a compression bit for this job. 
Now if you look closely, you can see there's a really strange little thing at the end of the compression bit. It has two directional flutes. You see this little bottom part right here is what they call an upcut. That pulls the chips upward. Whereas there's another part which has a down spiral on it and that pushes the chips downward. So here's the difference between an up bit, a down bit, and a compression bit. An up bit, when it's spinning, the spiral is rolling upward. And so what it's going to do is cause something called tear out. It's basically pulling the fibers of the wood upward. And so the upper cut edge of the project, whether you're doing clamps or anything, is going to be rough. There's just going to be burrs hanging out, and it's just it's going to do tear out. And it doesn't look on look good on the top of your project. Whereas when you're using a down cutting bit like this, where the spiral, when the bit is spinning, is going down, it's pushing all the chips downward. And the benefit to that is it's shearing downward at the top edge and leaves a nice clean cut like this. However, when you're using a straight down bit and you're cutting actually through the part like that, you're going to get tear out at the bottom of the part. So this is the advantage of a compression bit and why we're using this because we are cutting through this project and what a compression bit will do, it's got the down cutting spiral here. So it's shearing downward along the top edge, but at the bottom, it's got the up cutting shear. So here, there is no tear out because it's pulling upward. And that's why they call it a compression bit, because it's compressing the chips from the top downward and from the bottom up. This bit is available on the IDC Woodcraft store, and also the 8th inch compression bit is available. There will be links down below in the description for that. The first thing you want to do before you ever put a bit in your CNC router or whenever you're doing a change out is you want to clean out the collet nut because sawdust gets up in there. Now I find a little toothbrush does just fine. And you also want to clean off the sawdust off the collet itself. You can get some slippage as a result of that from your router bit. Now one of the things is I have a Makita router and Makita routers blow the air down and out the bottom and it blows sawdust everywhere. So in order to prevent that I've made a special dust boot. I actually designed this and carved it out and you see there's a little plate in the bottom that redirects the air up those little slots. And it's got the little cutout for the little locking pin on the side there. Now I've had a lot of people ask me about this. If I have this file available so I will work on it and if it's available there will be a link down below where you'll be able to get the file off of the IDC Woodcraft store and you can make it yourself. And then there's a little plastic tube that comes out the top and I just put my vacuum hose over it. Now this comes from Amazon. I always recommend this tube. It comes down and around and plugs right into my vacuum. There's a link of course below for that tube as well. And then we install our router bit. So the position is the front left corner of the pit part. And what I'm doing now is using what they call the XY0 setting of the G-Sender software. And that is positioning the true zero position of the corner of the board. Now you can do this manually if you want, but the thing to take note is your Z0 is off the surface of your spoil board, not off the top of the project. So that's why I did a second touch off on the side there. So it's lower left corner and the spoil board surface, that's your zero. And then load your program and start cutting your project. And what this is going to do, it's going to cut this whole thing out in a series of steps. What it's doing right now is cutting the step or the foot of the clamp. And we'll take a closer look here in just a second. But this is how fast it is running. And you see the bit just takes a plunge down in. And I'll have the feed rate settings for this bit as well for this project down in the description. So it's kind of a horseshoe shape.
I'm going to put a little tape around that dust shoe. So this is what we're cutting out right now. This is the foot of the clamp. Or now it's going to get into position to cut the step out. So it's doing a pocket cut raster mode along with the grain of the material. So if you do any designing and you're doing a pocket cut, it's always best to do what's called a raster instead of an offset. And make sure your raster goes along the grain of the wood so you avoid witness marks. I've got videos about that. In fact, you want to download the PDF, if you haven't already, of all the videos I've created. There's a link, of course, down below in the description for that. And once it cuts out the pocket, then it's just going to cut out a final profile around the pocket. And the step of the clamp is now complete, and it's going to move on to the next clamp. Now you notice there's sawdust everywhere. I don't worry about the sawdust. It's not going to stop the router, but it's not going to cause any finish issues. We're making clamps. We don't really care about finish. And so this is the final step of the clamp and now it's going to go in and start cutting the slot out. Now it's cutting it out in a ramping spiral. So the bit is going back and forth but it's also moving down the entire time. And after about four passes you can start to see the blue underneath and that's the tape at the bottom holding the project piece down. So it's going to move from clamp to clamp to clamp to cut these slots out. This is for your screw to hold the clamp down. And finally, on the last piece, after the slot is cut, it's going to move in and profile the entire clamp out. And it's going to cut the clamp out. And again, it's going in a spiral cut. The bit is always moving down while it's going around the cut. Now you see there's a little hop there. There's going to be another one right there. And it's going to hop here again. It's leaving two tabs on the project. And those tabs will hold the clamps in place while it cuts them down to the bottom where it cuts them out. This entire run on the both projects, the 16 and 24, I had my counts wrong before, 24, will take about an hour to run out. Now I want to make a note, if you own a Bob's CNC router, you need to follow the paper instructions for your setup because it's slightly different because the way their orientation is on their machine. And that's what our project looks like when we're done. Now we just take our scraper again, and we just need to get underneath the project and start to peel it up. And whenever you do this, you always want to be careful that you're not going to cause damage to your project, especially if it's something that is a really nice project, if you're doing an inlay or something like that, which I have a video that takes you step by step through an inlay. A very cool video with a free file I actually give you the file of the inlay that I'm creating so you can do it yourself. But here we are. We have 24 clamps here and you simply just pop them out. Now you want to pop them out from the top downward. If you don't, then you'll start, uh, you'll, you'll pull the grain out from the back of the clamp and you don't want to do that. So now we have all our clamps and there's one more task left to do.
you see the little tab on there. So we can either saw it off or you can sand it off. And you see how clean these cuts are? That's because of the compression bit up and down. So this is why compression bits are really good to use in woodworking when you're cutting through the project. There's a little bit of fur on the top. That's because it's pine. Pine tends to be a hairy type of wood. And then I'm just going to sand off each of the little tabs. There you go. You'll have either 28 clamps if you have a machine like the long mill CNC router or 16 clamps if you have a smaller CNC router. Down below in the description is a link to everything I've talked about in this video including the file for these clamps where you can get them off the IDC Woodcraft store. So have some fun making your own stuff for your CNC router. You don't need to buy clamps. <laughs> you can make your own with your machine. So with that one more thing, do you know anybody that needs some extra clamps? I've got about three lifetime worth of clamps here. <laughs> Happy CNC.